Shalom. I'm Moray Matan, and welcome to this week's Moray Minute. This week, our Torah portion is called Naso, and I want to bring up a couple of points to you this week in dealing with what the Bible calls the Sota, or the, the unfaithful wife. It's interesting because in the Talmud, in Sota 3a, it says, a person does not sin unless a spirit of folly enters into him. The word the Torah uses for the Sota's going astray, shitut, also means folly, or get this, insanity. I think we could all agree that we have done things in our lives where we have gone away from Hashem, and looking back on it, it's like, well, that was an insane thing to do. Why would we want to stray from our loving Heavenly Father, from the Mighty One of Israel? Well, the truth is, we are at war with our flesh. As we say in Judaism, we have two natures. We have an evil inclination and we have a good inclination. We have a Yetzer Hara, the evil inclination, and a Yetzer Tov, the good inclination. What's so interesting to me is that we talk about this in the course from Jesus to Yeshua, myself and Dr. Doug Wheeler, and in it, we really dive into some of the teachings that are in a wonderful compendium of knowledge known as the Tanya, where the Alter Rebbe has set down some amazing things about good, evil, the battle with the, the soul and the body, or what we might call the nefesh, the the part of our soul, if you will, that's like our life force, what, what animates us, what keeps us alive, and that part of our soul that, at least on one level, resides outside of time and space with God himself. It is in heaven right now. We are eternal beings, and although there is a part of our eternal spirit, if you want to call it that, and by the way, there are five aspects or layers, levels of the soul that we go into and from Jesus to Yeshua, that's the Jewish understanding. We have these five aspects of the soul. So I'm doing a little bit of an oversimplification here just for reasons of time and understanding. So that eternal part of us is with God. And then we have that part of our soul that animates us, that gives us life. Here is what the Tanya says about this sort of battle that goes back and forth. Every Jew, whether righteous or wicked, has two souls. One soul clothes itself in the person's blood to animate the body. That's what we were talking about before, what we could call the life force, if you will. It is the source, the, it is the source of all its egocentric drives and desires. This is that, that flesh part of ourselves, so to speak. And the second soul of a Jew is literally a part of God above and is the source of the person's striving to unite with God. I think that's a beautiful way to put that. The Tanya continues, the body is called a small city. As two kings wage war over a city, each wishing to capture it and rule over it, that is to say, to govern its inhabitants according to his will, so that they would obey him and all that he decrees for them, so do the two souls, the godly soul and the vitalizing animal soul that derives from the klipa. This is something that means a shell. You know, we have this shell that we try to, we try to bring it under submission of God so that it be, can become what's known as a klipa noga, or a a translucent shell, like that of a grape, where you could see through the, the skin of a grape, not like a walnut where it's opaque and you can't see through it. So anyway, it wages war one against the other over the body and all its organs and limbs. The desire and will of the godly soul is that it alone should rule over the person and direct him, and that all his limbs should obey it and surrender themselves completely to it and become a vehicle for it and serve as a vehicle for its ten faculties of intellect and emotion and three garments, thought, speech, and action, and that the entire body should be permeated with them alone to the exclusion of any alien influence, God forbid, while the animal soul 
desires the very opposite. Let me break this down for us. This animal soul, we learn this in the yeshiva, it's known as the nefesh behemah, the animal instinct, the uncorrected animalistic aspect of our soul that only goes by its base desires. It wants to conquer. It wants to elevate itself. It wants to give in to all of its appetites. It's just basically, it's when we act like animals, when we are not acting refined, when we're not acting like we have elevated our soul to that level which we learn about in the yeshiva called the nefesh hamaskelet, where we are elevating to that godly plane, that godly madrega, as we say in Judaism, that level. So we have this, this battle between the klipa, the, uh, the shell that is encasing our soul. And so we have this, this battle between what we could call the animal soul and the eternal soul, the, the flesh and the spirit, as Rav Shaul would say in the Brit Hadashah. So these things are constantly at war. And this is what is going on, not just in the situation with the sota, with the um, uh, the wife that has been unfaithful or is suspected of being unfaithful. We're not just talking about sensual desires, but any type of animalistic thing. What is one of the first words that a small child learns? Mine. We, we want for ourselves. We don't naturally put the needs of others before the needs of ourselves. And that is where the rectification happens. That's where the tikkun happens. That's where we need the kedusha, the holiness in our lives to elevate us from that place of base instinct, animalistic desire and action, elevating to, to do what the Spirit of God would want us to do. It is something that we need to always be on guard against. Remember all the way back in the, just after the story of creation, all the way back in the book of Genesis, where God says sin is crouching at the door. It, it's wanting to take hold of you, but you must master it. It reminds me of Simon Peter that was told by Yeshua that Satan has desired to have you, to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith would be strong. And that's our prayer here at Kosher Pastor, our parent ministry, Ahavat Ami Ministries, and Yeshivat Shuvu, and Uri. Our prayer for you is that though the enemy would love to sift you like wheat, we are praying for you that your faith will be strong and that you will rise above that animalistic aspect of your soul and you would elevate that shell that's around you, that klipa, you would elevate that to something that is more like something translucent where God's light can shine through. Thank you for joining me this week. Once again, I am Moray Matan. And if you'd like to learn with me in my Kosher Pastor program or in the URI program, specifically designed for Africans and people of African descent, you can respectively go to kosherpastor.com or af.shuvu.tv af.shuvu.tv. And of course, the larger yeshiva, Yeshiva Shuvu, the largest Messianic Jewish yeshiva in the world, shuvu.tv is where you can learn under Rabbi Shapira and Rabbi Bernstein. Thank you so much for joining with me. All the best to you. Koltuv.